about this country, I don't know of any other country in the world that was settled predominantly by people who were coming to practice their faith. They came here because they were not allowed to practice their particular faith in their own country. And so they came here mostly from Europe and they set up a country that was based on Judeo-Christian principles. When I say Judeo-Christian, the Mosaic laws, 10 commandments, and the teachings of Jesus Christ, the, morale, the morals and, and teachings of Jesus Christ. That's, that's what our founding documents are based upon. It's in our DNA. You know, if you think of other countries like Italy and Greece and China and Turkey and places like that, they've all sort of changed over time. I mean, they've been, they've been there for, cent for millennia in many cases. And their culture has sort of evolved over time. But not us. We came here and created a blank slate. We, we birthed a nation from nothing. I mean, there was nothing here. I mean, yes, we have Native Americans, but, if, but candidly, that, that, there isn't much Native American culture in American culture. It, it was born of the people who came here pursuing religious liberty to practice their faith, to live as they ought to live, and have the freedom to do so. Religious... I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone, also the Sasea Shalom, to you other elders and you Akim, you uh, followers of the truth, sincere followers of the truth. And let me say Shalom to the elect. Uh, this video is accredited and uh, sent to me by the brother, screen named Judah Tribe, 1969, who sends me videos time to time and clips. It was an other elder Jake. I don't believe he's in the truth, but he gets on this man for what he does. And, you know, the elder men that been through things, this man look like he's up in age. And he goes hard, man, you know. But, um, you know, but he got to get into the truth. But, uh, you know, I've seen a little bit of that response. And, you know, I want to touch on that. Uh, we don't know uh, how this man gets down with his media machine as he's, you know, cons uh, you know, on purposely trying to stir up controversy. This is what the media does. But, um, you know, this man trying to get back his birthright, we can see the frustration. And it's because of us. We're pretty sure of that. But, you know, just to touch on a few things he said. He said that... Um, 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 you know, in America, America was nothing and had nothing. Uh, what did exactly did he say? I think he said um, nothing was in America before whites colonized, white colonizers, colonizers arrived. That's what he said. Nothing was in America. But then he says there was Native Americans. So what is he calling the natives, Native Americans? Nothing. But when you do the history of the Native Americans, they had the first health care plan. They had colonies. They had cities. Oh, they had it laid out. Those were the, those were the lost tribes of Israel. And they were scattered. Now, it's crazy because you got Israelites saying that the Native Americans aren't Israelites. But somehow, according to the curses, they definitely got the curses. But they're not Israelites. So... That doesn't make any sense. But anyway, um, he also said that they were um, Bible believers. They came with Jesus Christ, which I'll go into also. Those uh, They were called the, the uh, Jesuit Christians, the Jesuits of Jesus Christ. Now, you had in the period of the 1400s, um, the, the, which was called the rebirth, the renaissance, the rebirth. Where not only they painted the images um, uh, of the pictures, which they've done in history, Maccabees 3 and 48, Job 9 24. Now, what they've done is they've managed not only just to paint the pictures and cover up the images, uh, that wasn't enough, right? When you're conquering a land, now you must take that image you covered up and a new image, which was called whitewashing. And you have to ask yourself, if there wasn't, uh, if the image, if they had to whitewash an image, 
that means the image had to look like something before they whitewashed it, right? So they claim that they cleaned it up and made it look better. This is that supremacy. So then he came as the Jesuits, and, you know, our people wasn't trying to hear it. I, I read up on this stuff. Uh, Vocab Malone is a Calvinist. John Calvin did the same thing. He was nothing more than a, a, a Jesuit successor out of the Roman Catholic Church. It was the same thing. I have did research, just like Vocab Malone did research on us and talk about Hebrew Israelites, one West, and it goes back to the 1800s or whatever, uh, something he said. But guess what? The Roman Catholics with the uh, Geneva, Geneva Convention and what they've done, right? A reformation. Why did they reform it? They were the Calvinists, the Jesuits. They had different sects of these people, and you know what I'm talking about, okay, that went around and forced Christianity. They went over into Africa. They went up into Europe. They went in different places. You understand, these people aren't originally Europeans, <laughs> right? But they went into these different places, and they conquered and took it because people was not trying to hear it because we had our own faith. When you have a group of people that have their own faith, this is what they do. And this also comes out of St. Augustine, out of the Roman Catholic Church, was also Muhammad, so-called, had his jealousy towards the Israelites as well. This was always about uh, uh, Jacob and, and uh, Adumian, right? And, and power, you know, money, business. But it's always been that struggle. And they forced our people, as we see our people following these religions today. He also said that they came in the Christian way. He's not telling the whole story. No, they didn't. And I'll get into that in a second. This is Genesis, I mean, Exodus 21 and 16 as we back up with scripture. Who uh, who is go uh, Salakia? And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Now this is the laws going to the Israelites. So if these people are claiming to be of Christ like Jesus, which tells you they didn't have the law and they knew it. So they adopted themselves to make themselves feel like they were a part of the law or they were the law of the law. Right? Over time, they started following our customs. And uh, they knew they didn't have, they didn't have the covenant. And they still know it. Right? So let's read this article real quick. Uh, this is called Jesuits and Slavery in Northern America. I'll try to read through this quick. The Society of the Jesuits participated in the slaveholding from the 16th to the 19th centuries. At the time of the orders of mid-18th century suppression. Okay? Jesuits claimed ownership over about 2,000 enslaved people in the British and French colonies of Northern America. And you know it had to probably be more than that. Um, that's why they say over 2,000 enslaved. After the Orders of Restoration in the United States in 1805, the Jesuits turned, in, tur turned to slaveholding and uh, again in the new uh, and their new and reestablished missions okay, in the Mid-Atlantic region and along the Mississippi and Ohio rivers. These would which would be called your Calvinists as well. Remember, Vocab Malone is a Calvinist. When you go do your research, do that research on John Calvin and what they did. They had the Reformation as well. When they came out in the Renaissance, their whole um, motive was to take the Bible, create a new Jesus, and declare a new God and a new Son. And that's when they put that Cesar Borgia up, right? It says. Um, the Jesuits in North America owned and rented and received as payments in the uh, kind of a term over 700 people between the order's restoration and the end of the Civil War. All Jesuit missions, provinces, and institutions in North America benefited in some form uh, of slave, enslaved labor. So this is how they managed to take our Bible, uh, write it, and then bring it to us and say, here, this is your new Jesus and we are your owners and this is what you must do this is printed history right this is legitimate 
history. No lies there. So I'm just trying to make this quick. Um, in some form of slavery, when the Jesuits retained from the un, uh, from or abandoned the use of enslaved labor, they nearly always did so for financial reasons or because of the legal prohibition, rather than out of the uh, principled opposition. Right. So you would have the uh, Amalekites, which would have been involved as well. The order of the United States did not participate in the 19th century abolition movement, right? And some Jesuits openly justified slavery as socially and morally beneficial for black people. Let me hit this other point real here, back real here. Uh, this is why I'm going to get into vocab in them. It's back in the reincarnation. They're doing the same thing. French Jesuits introduced the first enslaved Africans to the uh, Kaskakia, uh, what's to say, Kaskakia mission, which had been founded in about Quebec in 1703 for the conversion, the conversion of the Illinois people. At the time of the order of suppression in the French colonial territories, the North American 1763 the Jesuits claim ownership over 68 people in Cascadia, uh, uh, making the order of the largest slaveholder in Illinois country. Further south, over 100 enslaved people of Africa, origin or descent labor on the Jesuit plantations, founded uh, outside of New Orleans in 1727, the Royal I mean, I could read this all day. Uh, con confiscations of Jesuit property that followed the suppression included enslaved people. I mean, this goes on and on and on in this article. And they're just breaking it down. They're just breaking it down. So this is what would have happened of how this place got set up. Not just, it was under slavery, but it was under the fact of religion. And Renaissance religion. That's what it was. That's what was founded, Renaissance religion. But this man says, "Hey, there, we're here. They came in a matter of peace and with the Bible and with Jesus." Timothy one and eight. But we know that the law is good if a man is uh, is used it lawfully, knowing this that the law is not made uh, for the righteous man. Why? Because a righteous man would understand. But for the lawless and disobedience, for the ungodly and the sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of the mothers, for manslayers. So you will understand that this law, um, when you go into the scriptures, it was talking about the Israelites. Right? But we know who the profane uh, person is that sold his birthright. Right? You know, so... You had a thing called now called supersessionism, supersession and supersessionism, right? Which is called replacement theology in a Christian doctrine, which asserts uh, the new covenant through Jesus Christ, right? Um, it also it says in the Christian supersessionism is a theology view on the current status of the church and related in relation to the Jewish people and Judaism. It holds the view that Christian church the Christian church has succeeded the Israelites as a defined people of God. So this thing vocab is speaking and all this about cessation and uh, supersessionism, is that what they call it. These are those things that they keep making up and reforming. This is what these Christians do. And that's what they've always done. When they see the people slipping away from Christianity, they force it back on you. Now they got something called supersessionism. But they won't go over there to that country and tell them, look, we've taken over. And they ain't going to say that. Right? Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he's a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and as his death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto himself all nations, and heapeth unto, um, unto himself all people. So when you go into also the history, all the treaties, everything that was broken, thousands of treaties was broken, and treaties are made today 
amongst the Native Americans, the so-called blacks and Native Americans, really the Native Americans, and still haven't been one fully kept after all these years. You can look it up. They claim they have kept some, these treaties, these false treaties, uh, these people are pushed. Um, we don't know us, we're in the ghettos, we're in the slums, um, disproportionately uh, financially able to handle, sustain ourselves in a, in a long term, in a whole nutshell of a people. Not the ones that made it being athletes and whatever, but they're still not in the stock market, you know, uh, running it. They're not running businesses, big businesses, you know. When is a Jake going to own a McDonald's? When is that going to happen? Or any kind of uh, fast food or whatever restaurant. Not that we endorse fast food restaurants, but as the, um, you know, business minded people you ain't going to see that you could be rich as you want you see a jake get a restaurant grand opening grand closing you know we under that curse we're the israelites that's all i have on that shalom